So the last search that I'll at least sort of introduce is sort of this idea of something being a bi-directional search. Now the idea behind a bi-directional search is, well, you know, again, I might have a starting point and I might have a goal condition. Well, the BFS, again, will get me there, but I have to do my moves one step at a time. So it's a lot of branching out, uh, a lot of unnecessary uh, pathways that actually might not be really close to my goal. So what bi-directional search is essentially doing is saying, well, one way we are going to solve this is when I do my starting point searches, I'm also going to do my searches from the goal. I'm essentially taking steps back. I know how to get to the goal from sort of any of the points around that goal. And so I'm going to make one step with my search. I'm making these multiple steps. I'm just not going to draw them all out. And then I make that same sort of step and those multiple steps around goal, uh, all one step. Then when I branch out, again, I make my next sort of steps. I, I do my next sort of iteration uh, with both of these. So again, start and goal are happening at the same time. I'm gonna make my next move. 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 And what you're gonna notice is that if I keep on following sort of this path or these two paths, I might reach a point where I find a connection, a node that ha was in the starting path and in the goal path. And whoa, well, since I've done, you know, I see it in both of them, I have found the path. Uh, and okay, to walk through this in a little bit or in our sense, you know, again, completeness, yes. Optimality, yes, if we think about the idea of step costs being equal and we're doing specifically the breadth first. More to the point though, notice when we are dealing with sort of space and time complete, uh, complexity, uh, less than BFS, DFS, and iterative deepening search, actually by half. And the reason behind this is very similar to if just to kind of see this uh, or explain this, uh, if I look at sort of O of N versus uh, O of N cubed versus O of N uh, squared, they're both sort of going up at very high exponential rates. So here's the two and here's the three. But, you know, one's just doing it at a much faster route. What we're dealing with here is sort of that similar thing. So in our sense, even though, again, it may be a large number, we are going to be able to cut that search in half by doing sort of two searches at the same time. To walk through this, again, all we're doing is just two breadth first searches. Two cues are happening from my starting point and my goal point. In this case, I'm working off of H. Again, you can see they both start from nothing. We're going to treat them both as if they are the starting point. Well, again, I do my Q1, my starting Q, and I treat it just like it's a breadth first search. I see that it has B, it has C, it has I. I'm adding them in uh, you know alphabetical order just for the sake of kind of explainability, not visual ability. But again, they're in the Q. They are all sort of waiting to be processed. But rather than sort of the next step of a queue or a, a BFS queue where we just decrement, uh, uh, dequeue the next move, we're actually going to completely move over. And now we're going to make a step with our second queue. And so the same thing's going to happen. We removed H from the queue. H has two possible routes, F and G. And so they're added to the queue. All right, well, now what do we do? We go back to Q1 and we just follow its Q. B is the first thing in there, so we are going to remove it. We see that B happens to have its own sort of child it can go to, K, so we add it to its Q. You already know what's about to happen. I go back to Q number two, and I am going to pull out my F, and I'm going to add in G and or J and E. I'm not going to add in uh, G again, only because I see it in there. You know, that's a more of a design choice for our sake. It's already in the queue. We'll leave it there. Okay. Well, what happens next? 
back to Q1. I see that C is the next one in the route. I remove it. Now, one thing to sort of note, just because G is in both of the Qs, we are not done. Being in the Q just means it's in line to get considered, but it's not in our pathways. Again, if we're thinking about this, we have a pathway, A to H, and so yes, we are sort of in this route of I see that C uh, is going to get me there. I see that G, well, not actually, I, that's wrong. G has not been added into the H pathway quite yet. All I've seen is that A can go to C, H, can go somewhere it can go to g so again all i know right now is a can go to c and h can come from g i don't know that c can go to g uh quite yet i'm not there yet and so that's actually sort of that point you notice how k is sitting inside of my uh both my cues as well because what happens if K is in both pathways first. That might be the faster route. Uh, it, again, it, that it all depends on just where it's followed in the queue. Both of them are going to get me there, and you notice they're both going to be the optimal. Well, one's going to give me uh, a, a pathway of four. One's going to get me the pathway of three. But we have to work through the algorithm to officially make that happen. So again, uh, where am I? So Q two. All right. So adds C and K to it. Q2 moves to no G. Okay, so I've just hit Q2. I'm going back. I'm going to look at I. All right, well, I does its song and dance. It's going to add the D. You know, it's not that we already have it set in stone. Again, we're just sort of waiting for that fact that we see G is in our our next step, so or in our, our Q1. And once we do we have our pathway. So we have to work through the algorithm again. Uh, so I just got removed. We move back to Q. We are about to do the next same thing to E. Once again, you see that we have a few possible routes in the Q for consideration. Again, we are looking for a pathway from A to H. We're hopefully going to get the most optimal route. but it all takes walking through the algorithm to find that out. So again, we just worked off of E, we come over to uh, A or uh, start, and we add Q. Q is a possible route that A can get to. So we do see again, this idea that A can go from these different pathways. H can, let's see, uh, it had the possibility of going from F, it has the possibility of going to G. But again, we have not uh, sort of made that next hook and there's also I, let me just add in I real fast. So again, you know what's gonna happen. We go to J, J is gonna be consumed. It's gonna be a possible pathway, right? And we don't see any new paths from J, so it's Q, we're just gonna leave it as is. You could, again, still add the D, it depends on the algorithm or how you're working through it. But finally, finally, I see that once again, I have A, I have C, I have H that's able to go to G. And I see finally in my first Q that from C, I can get to G. I see that C can make that leap of faith. And once I do, I happen to know, oh, well, since I had the connection of A, C, G, and I had the connection of H from G, since G is in both of these pathways, I have found the optimal solution in less time than breadth first search by using bi-directional search. Ah.